is ATL Day Ones, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. Welcome into ATL Day Ones with Jarvis and Tanitra. want to say thank you for making ATL Day Ones your first listen of the day. And remember, we're free and available wherever you download your podcast. And wherever you download your podcast, make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that you leave us a five-star review. We really appreciate you. People have been dropping five-star reviews in the comments, so you can drop those in as well. Because guess what? What we don't do on this show is hide greatness because that's what we are we we speak it into existence we believe in that on this show so yeah if you have a problem with that mm, do pound sand kick rocks all that good stuff but um also want to let you all know that we are part of we're on your fire stick we're on roku as well so yes atl day ones and locked on sports atlanta is expanding so make sure you check us out on all platforms there is no excuse why you shouldn't be rocking with us monday through friday now t I think there's something when it comes to Atlanta Braves, you know, when it comes to certain situations, we're just going to have to get used to it. We'll talk about that. And are the Georgia Bulldogs better than they were last year? We'll discuss. And last but not least, in for the culture, I think this guy, his name is Robert Sarver. This is probably the best decision he's ever made in his life. And it's by far. (laughs) <laughs> we'll talk about that how far that is how deep that is and, and for the culture but first t we had to talk about last night the the braves get the, the dub against the washington nationals um kenley jansen is what i was talking about we're going to get used to he scared us again i'm talking about by the the most weirdest way by yeah. bunts like people were literally bunting for hits and getting on base and then of course you got the error by matt olsen and it just yeah. it was just a lot going on t but you know obviously the braves end up getting the save kenley jansen has that meme well like yeah i got it done i don't care how you feel about it right but you know i just think that you know this is our, our Will Smith. This is our 2022 right. version of Will Smith, and we're going to have to roll with it as we get ready to ramp up for the playoffs. You really will. And it is going to be okay because somehow, some way, I'm just going to keep telling myself that. But I, and, and so listen, when a team strategizes with a butt, sometimes that is very difficult to kind of manage for. And hey, Kenley Jansen escaped. That's all that right. matters. Yeah. A W is what the Braves got last night, which is a good thing. But I wanted to go back to what you said about Matt Olson because we just spoke about him yesterday and how, yes, he is trending up a little bit, but I believe he was the guy that you chose outside of, of course, Acuna Jr. when we talked about Dansby, Austin. And, you know, just when we looked at and framed the top of the order, essentially, Matt Olson was the one you called out and said, hey, you have to produce at the plate because what you do on defense What you do when you're not at the plate, it's not as substantive or meaningful as what Austin Riley does at third or what Dansby does at short or what Ronald Acuna Jr. does in right field. You at first base, uh, you at the plate, uh, you at the Mm base. So you, what what happened last night, that error is unacceptable because Matt Olson, pretty much, what was it, 0-1 last night? So at the end of the day, if that's what you're going to be at the plate, you most certainly can't have errors. And we know even looking at the bigger picture as things really start to wind down and the Braves are trying to use every opportunity that they have to be like a tune-up for the right. Mets, no errors allowed. Yeah, no doubt. You can't you can't have that type of stuff. That's a, that's the type of stuff that, that will get you beat in the playoffs. And, of course, Matt Olson, in your first year, you, you do not want to be re- the reason – or the main reason why the Braves lose a playoff game. Because guess what Freddie Freeman is doing over there uh, on the other side of the world, over there, of this country? He is doing Freddie Freeman things. And we definitely don't want you to have to feel the wrath of Atlanta PS- PTSD, excuse me, uh, <laughs> when it comes to uh, professional sports. But, T, um, there is this, Arthur Smith has some interesting things to say uh, when it comes to the start of – 2021 versus the start of 22 we'll get to that but before we get to that t tell the folks about what's going on at bet 
betonline.net. So a betonline.net, that is the place where you go for all of your sports betting info. So if it's the NFL and you're kind of wondering, what's that line looking like for the Falcons and Seahawks for this weekend? Both teams 0-2 trying to get their first dub of the year. Go to betonline.net. It'll give you the information on what the line looks like, who's favored, and how that line moves on a day-to-day basis. It's the same thing for the NBA. Jarvis and I spoke to you guys on our Tuesday episode about the fact that on CBSSports.com, six Hawks made the top 100 for their list of top players for 2022. So then the question becomes, do, do those kind of articles and that kind of information move the needle as far as the Hawks being a favorite to maybe take it all? Again, that's where you find out that answer on betonline.net. And it doesn't just stop with our major sports. Also, we talk about specialty sports like MMA and golf. You can find out information there too. If you're a novice, all good. If you're a pro, an expert, all good. Because guess what? An expert or a novice can get the information they need with all the podcasts that are available through the betonline.net family. So check that out, betonline.net, because that is where the game starts. Like I mentioned before, you talk about bet online. Yeah, go ahead. You got a lot of good information just for you. Now, here is what Arthur Smith has to say about when he was asked about the start last year versus this year. And was there any difference? Progress. We feel a lot better right where we're at offensively after two games than we did a year ago, if that's a comparison. Protecting well, the pockets have been clean for the most part. We run the ball relatively well. I don't disagree with anything he had to say to, say to you when, yeah. when you think about where this team is. And, you know, mm-hmm. last year, I think there is a big, a big difference. Now, obviously, the end results are the same. Obviously, mm-hmm. you can just look at it from that standpoint. But sure. I think that the Falcons are have made progress. Like I said, that's been a word for the past couple of days on, on, this, on this particular show. Um, so I think that, you know, Arthur Smith with a pretty decent assessment of it, where his team is. I would have to agree. If you look at it from the statistical perspective, there are there's support for that as well. And it may be minor support, but hey, four sacks is four sacks is four sacks this season after two games versus three sacks last year. And I feel like still four sacks is the tip of the iceberg of what we're going to see um, from the defense this year. Right. Whereas at three. We kind of felt like after two games, that was indicative of what we were going to see. And we were right because the rest of the way, you only got 15. So I think that's one key component as well. The other key is this. We're looking at Tyler Algier for the first time in a regular season game last week. And maybe the yardage wasn't there, but I think you made that great statement that it's not all about the stats or even about the the win-loss record. It's about what you saw in him relative to what could have been in game one had you had another reliable back behind CP if you didn't want to ride him again. Now you know that you've got somebody that as the season goes on, you can ride. And I think that's especially important because depending on whether you go with Mariota, because we all think that he is what he is, or whether you go with Ritter and you've got to wait for him to trend up. So that means your passing game may take a hit for a minute. Good to have that running game, which I think is in much better shape. The last season, I think the O-line is also in better shape than it was last season. So that's another reason why I feel like you're going to see some success because whoever's behind center or under center, at least we know that person is has a fighting chance <laughs> to actually not be on the ground more than he's standing upright. And, and you know what? That was the, one of the questions that I had coming into the season. Like, mm-hmm. what are the surrounding pieces going to look like? Because, you know, we talked about ad nauseum about whether or not it should be Marcus Mariota and Desmond Ritter. And we came to the conclusion that, hey, it should be Mariota. That's what you brought him mm-hmm. in for. He's the sure. vet, right? But to, after these two games, I think everybody has come to the conclusion that, you know what? The offensive line has been protecting a little mm-hmm. bit better. You yeah. know, Marcus Mariota is not necessarily running for his life. Right. every other down or right. he doesn't look like he's on the way to get sacked 40 times like Matt Ryan has d- did in the last few years so mm-hmm. I think when you have all of those pieces and then you you see a, a, some consistency in the running game mm-hmm. and you know those are the two things that I think that Arthur Smith wants and needs in order for this team to be successful this year so I, I think that those are the, some, some of the things that, you know, we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on as mm-hmm. the uh, Falcons, you know, they take on the Seahawks. They stay out on the West Coast um, at 425 games, a late kick again. So we will we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Another thing we keep an eye, have been keeping an eye on is how good Georgia has been looking. <laughs> Coming up next, though, we're going to discuss whether or not they actually are better than they were last year. 
Yeah, we know. They won a national championship. We'll talk about that next on ATL Day 1s with Jarvis and T, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. 